I have a slow metabolism. My metabolism is broken. I don't even know what metabolism is. No worries. I got you. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to increase your metabolism and accelerate fat loss. Metabolism is simply your total daily energy expenditure. It's made up of three parts. Your resting metabolic rate, the thermic effect of food, and the thermic effect of physical activity. Want to know how to calculate your resting metabolic rate? Well, if you have access to an expensive laboratory that conducts calorimetry, go for it. If not, you can use the Harris-Benedict equation or you can use the Mifflin-Jory equation. But don't bother worrying about using any of these methods. Why? They don't take into account your age, your height, your genetics, or your muscle mass. They give you a general estimate at best. And of the three parts of metabolism, this is the part that you can't change anyway. I'll tell you why later. But the other two you can change, which leads to the thermic effect of food. The energy cost of chewing, swallowing, digesting, absorbing, and storing of your food. You can leverage the thermic effect of food to increase your metabolism, which I'll get to, but let me describe TEPA, thermic effect of physical activity first. And a subset is non-exercise activity thermogenesis or NEAT. You've probably heard of it. It's everything except eating, sleeping, exercise, and physical labor. Think fidgeting, moving around, walking, this includes the popular step counting that you see people doing at lunchtime. So back to leveraging the thermic effect of food. Chew your food slowly and thoroughly. If you can, a short walk after you eat to help aid digestion, increase blood flow so that you can absorb and store the nutrients that you need to. Work with your body, not against it. The thermic effect of food is 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. That's not insignificant. And if you keep in mind that Protein, 25 to 30% of it is used just in digestion. Carbs, 5 to 10% is used. Cruciferous vegetables, think broccoli, 25 to 30%. And fats are just 0 to 3%. There you go, high fat diet. Keep that in mind. I'll give you a power tip at the end so that you can maximize the thermic effect of food, which leads to leveraging the thermic effect of physical activity. Muscle is metabolically expensive to maintain. If you have a physical labor job, that's great, but make strength training the foundation of your TEPA. Also, leverage metabolic circuits at the end of your strength training so that you can increase EPOC, excess post-oxygen consumption, which the extra requirement of oxygen and blood flow will burn some more calories as well. Some say 24 to 48 hours after a bout of exercise. I tend to agree. That's just anecdotal on my part. I feel like that works for me. It could work for you as well. And of course, you can also increase your training frequency, duration, and intensity. But if you're not used to training hard, go at it slowly so you don't burn out. Which leads to neat. This is often undervalued. There is a reason why fat people think they have what is a slow metabolism. They overeat and they don't move. Well, that doesn't help. There are a myriad ways to move more. You can do chores, you can take the stairs, you can putter, you can park far away in the parking lot. You get the idea. But if you have a dog, walk your dog. And of course, use the popular step counting. You get the idea. The thermic effect of food burns 10% of your total daily energy expenditure. The thermic effect of physical activity burns another 20% of your total daily energy expenditure. That leaves 70% from resting metabolic rate. Believe it or not, the resting metabolic rate does not predict weight gain or loss. Because it is adaptable, this is the number one reason people get frustrated. It will, if you eat more calories, you'll burn more calories. Eat less calories, you'll burn less calories. This is why crash diets always flame out after a while because the body adjusts. It's adaptable. And unfortunately, there is nothing you can do to change that. But the other 30% you can, which leads to the power tip. Watch this video next so you can get your protein intake sorted out and you can leverage the thermic effect of food. Thanks so much for watching.